Hello and welcome back to Hacktivity 2019. Um, we have a few announcements first. If you have a badge and a VIP band, please remember to pick up your hoodie and your t-shirt from downstairs. If you have an, an electronic badge, please update the firmware on your badge. Be sure to have a look at the Hacker Rank game in the Morgan Stanley booth and the Black Cell booth is very interesting with a display on vulnerabilities of security. Please could you welcome Andrea Pierini to talk about Who Am I? Privy, show me your privileges and I will lead you to system. Hello to everyone. Hope it continues to work, fing finger crossed. You can see it, okay? So first of all, uh, it's a real pleasure for me to be here for this amazing event. And I would like to thank the organization for giving me this uh, great opportunity. Just uh, two words about me before starting. Among the other things, I work like an IT architect and security manager for an Italian company. I come from Italy. And uh, security has always been a special interest for me since the early 19th, so I'm a little bit old. Uh, to be honest, um, offensive security is much more a hobby for me, and uh, during my spare time when I'm not cycling or diving, I like to uh, understand and sometimes discover uh, some uh, security issues in Windows and uh, Linux environments. These are my contacts, and I am a proud member of uh, these two uh, organizations. First of all, why this talk? Because my talk is, is about Windows privileges. I don't know how many of you know about Windows privileges. I think it's a, a well-known argument, but uh, we will introduce it. Uh, because I started my research, not so much research, but to understand better privileges, be, privileges because um, this were, these techniques, uh, I found that it, they were not so much exploited, not much taken in consideration, when it comes to privilege escalation. So uh, some techniques or manipulation are not well documented, and uh, I decided to dig deeper. One day I ran in this fantastic article with such a perfect uh, resume of uh, privileges, and I shared useful information with the authors of this paper. The agenda. Um, after a small, uh, very short introduction, we will see in more detail some very interesting privileges, some powerful privileges, which, which are called God privileges, and then how to uh, use them, and uh, then some uh, final thoughts. Sorry for my bad English. Uh, I hope you understand me, but as Italian, I always speak my, with my hands, and maybe this can help you to understand me better. I don't want to bore you with privileges and theories, so uh, first of all, I, I will spend just two words about it. What are privileges? Privileges, as Microsoft says, are a special uh, uh, rights granted to uh, users to perform uh, um, some um, high-privileged operations on the operating system, such as shutting down the system, changing the system time, and so on. In Windows env environments, um, some users and groups ha have already predefined privileges. Obviously, administrator system has all privileges, not all privileges, but most of them. Some users have special privileges. They can be assigned or managed via the security edit uh, console of the GP edit uh, from Microsoft, but you can also uh, play with privileges using directly the native APIs. Another interesting two, uh, thing to mention is that some privileges totally overwrite the permission which I set on, to an object, and this is very, very cool. Another thing is that uh, the most God privileges are only available in high integrity level process, in a high shell process. Otherwise, you won't see these privileges. This is the first thing that we should do, try to spawn a high integrity level 
process like the CMD shell, and if, if we are able to spawn it, probably we have some privileges. How do we discover our privileges? Simply with who am I slash priv. Windows Access Tokens, why I speak about Windows Access Tokens? Because they are closely linked, uh, uh, privileges and tokens. Because privileges are assigned uh, to the token when I log on to the system. Because when I log on to the system, a special token will be assigned to me, and each time I uh, spawn a process or a thread, a copy of this token will be um, made. What does this token contain? A lot of information. Member, group memberships, uh, and so on. Interesting is that in the token is um, included the list of privileges which are granted to me. So when I have a token with elevated privileges, I can, if I can impersonate this token, I will automatically have all these privileges. A token can be of different types. Again, I don't want to bore you. F uh, primary impersonation token, a primary, process, uh, um, primary token is mainly used for spawning processes and impersonation token for uh, spawning uh, threads. It's a little bit more complicated, but ke keep it simple. Um, the only useful type of token for us are the last two ones, security impersonation or security delegation token. These are the only two types of tokens we can abuse from. The other tokens are very beautiful, have a lot of privileges, but we cannot use them. Important thing is that once a token has been generated from the logon process, it, uh, the primary token frozen bit will be set. This means that I cannot add other privileges to my token. Otherwise, it would be too simple to elevate my privileges, no? But I can change the token. I can duplicate the token and, for example, from a primary token, create an um, impersonation token in order to impersonate the trade, for example. Okay, that's it. Everything is clear up to now? Yeah? Okay, good. Um, which account have special privileges? As I say, told you before, obviously, Administrator, local system, they have God privileges. They are the God on the machine. Some built-in users group, for example, backup operators, have um, backup and restore privileges. Printer operators have the load driver privilege on a, a domain controller. Local and network service accounts, they have always impersonate and sometimes assign primary privileges. And you will see that this is very, very uh, interesting one. Also manage service and virtual accounts, third-party application users, because to, in order to use and install some applications, uh, the software renders ask us to grant to the user which will impersonate this application to grant him special privileges. Or sometimes, and it, it really happens, I, I <laughs> you can believe me, some misconfigured users which have been granted unnecessary privileges. So if you are able to compromise an account of such a misconfigured users, you have done without uh, compromising that mean account, for example. I, for example, the, this backup program, Backup Exec, requires for the user who launches the program, obviously backup and restore privilege because it's his task, but also the act as part of operating system, the TCP privilege. Granting these privileges means granting to this user the complete control over the system. So, okay, we have to separate uh, the, the risk, the duties, we have to uh, grant only to the users the right uh, privileges to perform the task. But given to a user this privilege is like telling him here yeah, the, key, the keys of the kingdom, do whatever you want. How can we count these privileged accounts? Well, there are so many techniques and I don't want to speak about it, but simply mis uh, misconfigured service which I can impersonate or uh, simple uh, remote code execution via a CMD shell on IIS server or an, uh, c um, uh, command execution via MS uh, SQL and so on intercepting uh, many in the middle attacks, so NTLM authentication or, or, or uh, stealing credentials, care roasting, etc., etc. 
Another important thing to get uh, these privileges uh, is to uh, abuse from exploits. Uh, in the past, there have been many exploits which um, manipulate the tokens, and especially the last two one techniques, partial write and arbitrary writes, are very, very interesting because they permit a normal user from the user land to overwrite the e-process structure in kernel mode, okay, and to uh, grant, to add to himself other privileges. And these techniques are successfully being demonstrated, uh, like the, the, the first two one, and the other one we will show you is the load driver privilege. Okay, let's start with the privileges. The first one, and probably the most common and most well-known is the debug privilege. The debug privilege simply grants you to attach your debugger to any process. When I say any process, any process, also administrator or system process. Obviously, this is the simplest way to uh, elevate, to make privilege escalation. Debug processes, uh, the, um, the privilege of debug normally should be granted to developers, okay? But sometimes uh, this is not always the case. And if you have the, this privilege, you can attach and you can write code, your own shell code, for example, in a process which is running with a high privilege. There are so many techniques uh, from uh, write process, create remote thread, and so on. These are well documented, so uh, it's only important to say that with, with these debug privileges, as written here, a guy from Microsoft more than 10 years ago said, if you grant somebody the debug privilege, you gave away the farm because you grant him all privileges. He is the his system on this machine. Another interesting way to exploit the debug privilege without making it too complex with uh, creating remote threads, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's simply setting the parent process, creating a process, and setting the parent process of my process, a privileged process. And in this manner, I will impersonate the user who uh, is the owner of the parent PID. There are many ways to do it. To do it, uh, the, uh, simple API calls, I wrote, some time ago, a PowerShell script, uh, you can find it on my GitHub, which does this exactly, which spawns, uh, which uh, sets the parent process, a privileged process. You can choose which is the PID you want to set as parent process, as, as, and as you can see in the screenshot, a simple user becomes system, and he, own, he also can become trusted installer, because if I, I take the PID of the, trust, uh, the um, trusted installer, I can impersonate trusted installer, which is very, very dangerous. The restore privilege, we are performing backup. So we need to backup and restore, and we need special privileges in order to overwrite, override, sorry, in order to override the permission sets which are set on object. If a file is uh, accessible only by a special group or administrator, a backup operator could not access this file, okay? But if he has restore or backup privilege, he can override these uh, security settings. So uh, there are two API calls which I can use as, with these privileges in order to perform these nasty things. The first one is create file and I only have to specify a special flag with this file flag backup semantics. So if I'm doing some operations, Windows checks, if the flag, uh, if I'm doing some operation, I want to access a file which I could not access, Windows checks, if I have this flag active and I have the right privilege, please go on, I won't, I won't stop you, okay? And the same thing, I can do it on registry keys, so I can overwrite registry keys, okay? So, I can write files everywhere, even in System32, even files owned from trusted installer. And as you can imagine, there are countless possibilities. So the restore privileges, from, uh, if I have restore privilege, gaining system rights is just as drinking a, a bottle of uh, good Italian wine, okay?
I have just an example, but just of one of the many examples uh, to show you how to perform this task. For example, I will modify a service configuration, and in this case, it's the WAP push message routing service, which is present on, all, on uh, each Windows installation starting from 2016, if I don't, uh, yes, 2016. This service is interesting because, because a standard user can start the service, okay? Because obviously, even, I, if I, even if I, I have all the rights on the service, I can write, overwrite the service, but if I cannot launch it, I'm, I have no possibilities. So, what's the idea? First of all, I create a simple service DLL, which will run a batch file, and in these batch files, I will spawn a reverse shell, okay? And then, I will overwrite the service configuration, telling him that the service DLL is not the service DLL, the original service DLL, but the service DLL, which I will copy in system32 directory. This is possible because I use the backup semantic flag the restore flag in this case. After that, I copy the DLL. I could even overwrite the original DLL because it, even if it's owned by a trusted installer, I am performing a backup operation and I can overwrite everywhere. I have also a short video about this. I hope it will work. <laughs> I have a restore privilege. I created a simple executable, but could also be a script in which I will modify a registry key and will overwrite the, fly, the file and then launch my uh, service. And I get the rest, the rest back shell, and as you can see, I am system, so it's very, very easy to do, to implement. Back to us. The backup privilege is very similar. It's the opposite, but it's very similar. I can perform backup operation. This means that I can access file for backup purpose, which could, normally I could not access. Uh, one interesting thing is obviously to hash, uh, to dump the hash of the local NTLM database. I can do it in many ways. In this, in this way, um, I, I am doing it now with simply uh, operating system commands, the reg uh, utility, which can al allows me to perform a backup if I have backup uh, privileges. So I will simply backup copy the system hive, and then with one of the tools, in this example, Mimikatz, I will dump the hashes and obtain the hash of administrator, for example. I can read files everywhere. In this case, I can read a file which only administrator can access, always with the special flag. And then obviously copy it elsewhere. Members of backup operators can access the domain controller to, per to perform backups. So, I, as a backup operator, without other um, privileges or other groups, I can start a backup operation, dump the NTDS database, and then obtain the hashes. In this first example, I use VS Admin, which is an utility with Windows, but you have to install it. Okay? And then, with one of the tools uh, available, in this case I, I'm using DS internals, I get the boot key and then obtain the hashes from administrator dumping the database and TDSD, the Active Directory database. Or I can do it, I don't know how many of you, you uh, know this utility, it's this shadow, this shadow, unlike VSS, permits to perform operations even if you are not administrator. So I can make a backup of the NTDS database with this shadow, copy it in another location, and then perform the dump of the hashes. If you have backup and restore privileges, 
you are a member by the, uh, of the backup operators group, there is another interesting opportunity because you can set permission on each object, even if you can't do it, okay? And this is very cool. And as uh, you can see here, uh, via PowerShell, I have this um, folder, which only admin has full control and no one else has other access. As a backup operator, I can change the permission and add myself full control, grant to myself full control to this directory. This is what I call a very special bonus given to the backup operators. Very similar is this one, the take ownership privilege. What does this privilege say? This privilege grants you the possibility to take ownership of file. Probably you, you see it also in the GUI interface uh, of the um, Explorer of Windows. You can take ownership of a file. This is what um, a user with this special privilege can do, okay? Again, two simple API calls, set security info or set name security info. In the first one, I will pass him the handle of the object I want to um, take ownership. In the second case, the name of the object. Objects can be of any type, not only file, but of any type. How could we uh, use this for privilege escalation? Uh, the concept is the same like the restore privilege, but first of all, I have to take ownership of the registry key of the service I wish to modify. When I took ownership of this registry key, I will grant to myself or for the sake of simpleness to everyone full control on this uh, registry key and then I will alter the, for example, the, bin, uh, the executable part of this service. In this case, the MSI service. I will let him launch another executable which can contain my malicious code. Should be here, okay. I take the ownership with, the owner, with this flag, owner, <coughs> owner security information. Obviously, I have to, uh, the right privilege. And then once I took the ownership, using some API calls, I will set the permissions on this key, grant to everyone the full permission on this key, and then change the configuration of the service. Start the service, et voila, I'm, the, I'm again system, because obviously this service, I have to choose a service which runs with a high um, privilege, system, administrator, and so on. Okay, this one, as I mentioned to you before, is a special, special privilege. Normally, uh, administrator doesn't have this one. You have to grant him this special privilege. Uh, these privileges, Microsoft says, act as, uh, no, act as operating system. What this mean? Okay, what, what does this mean exactly? Well, with these privileges, a user is authorized to act as another user without specifying credential and to um, grant to this user other special privileges or group memberships. So imagine, if I have this privilege, I can log on as another user or as myself and tell to this function, LSA logon user function, using the as for you logon service, tell to this function, hey, put me in the administrator group and grant me the debug privilege. And this is possible because I have this uh, special privilege, okay? So, and LSA logon field, uh, um, user gives me back my precious token, my, my ARM token, my very powerful token, but we have a problem because I have this token, so I would like to spawn a process or a thread using this token, otherwise, what should I do with this token? We have a problem. In order to impersonate the thread, I, have, I need a special privilege, which is the impersonate privilege, but if I only have TCB privilege, in theory, I could not impersonate the thread. So I have this token, and I can do anything with it. But there is good news. There is this statement which, say, which says that impersonate privileges is not needed as long as the token is for you, the user and the owner of the token is myself, and the integrity level of the process I wish I, or, or the thread I want to spawn is less or equal as my integrity level as the parent process, okay? This is what we need. 
but Microsoft, starting from Windows 10, added more constraints. Really? Really? In this case, I just need to respect the original uh, constraint. And as you can see, I created a token for my user with, the back, uh, with um, two uh, powerful me memberships, uh, which are the... Oh dear, uh, where are they? the backup operators, okay? And um, what I did, what is this possible? Because uh, as long as the authentication ID of the originating, of the resulting token equals the S for you token or, uh, origin ID, all other checks will be bypassed. And when I create a token with the TCB privilege, these two conditions always match. So even if Microsoft adds other constraints, what wins is this one. And with the TCP privilege, I can impersonate the thread without problems. This is what I wanted to say, okay? I will show you just some examples on how to abuse from these privileges. Uh, in the first one, we will use the Kerberos authentication domain, okay? And with uh, this um, privilege, I will impersonate domain admin. In the other two, I will use NTLM authentication, okay? And in the first one, I will create a token for myself and add myself uh, the debug privilege. In the other example, I will create a token for administrator and then act myself in a local administrator group. Using C Sharp and Kerberos authentication is very, very easy. As you can see, only two, two lines of code, and I'm able to write in a protected directory as the user, which is not admin, but has the TCP privilege, because I assume the identity of domain admin. Very, very easy. In the other one, I can alter using NTLM authentication, I can alter the username parameter, myself or administrator, put me in extra groups, for example, um, in an administrator group, call my function, my API call, and the resulting token, uh, H4U token, will have all the privileges to, to do what I want it to do. For example, in the left side, adding me as a supplementary privilege or adding me uh, directly to the local administrator group. I have also a video about this because maybe I was not so clear. But I would like to show you another video because this is more a joke I made with my sysadmin colleagues because we made a bet and I told them act I log on as a local administrator on a machine, on a Windows server, act as a guest account, so impersonate a guest account, and act as the domain admin. They told me, you are crazy, it's not possible. We make a bet of a good Italian bottle of wine, and when I showed them that it was possible, the day after I was drunk. So the guest account is disabled, I'm local administrator. Now I launch my magic program, silly program, Okay, and now I am guest. But the cool thing is that if I make a whoami slash groups, I belong to the domain admin group. Is this true or is it just a joke? Because they didn't believe me. Okay, I will read a file where only administ local administrators have the possibility to read. As you can see, only administrator can access this file. And if I can act as administrator, I can see the contents of this file, okay? It was more a joke, but just to show you what sort of nasty things you can do with this privilege.
Ah, Lord. We were here. The create token privilege is also considered a God privilege because as the word says, if I have this privilege, I can create a token. I can create a token and I create a token like I want with all the memberships, the privileges I want to have. This is very, very pu uh, useful and powerful as you can imagine. But again, here we have a problem because even if I create this token, I cannot impersonate it because I don't have the rights to impersonate. But, as I told you before, if uh, the integrity level of the process is less or equal, etc., etc., I can impersonate it. But this is not more true, because uh, um, starting from Windows 1809 and Windows Server 2019, extra controls were made, were took, uh, made in place, which uh, blocks this possibility. And as you can see, I have this powerful token with membership of trusted installer, okay? So it, it's a very, very powerful token. But if I want, if I try to, for example, write a file in system32 directory, I get an access denied. Exactly the impersonation level is invalid. What does this mean? That probably Windows um, checks what you are wanting to do and if uh, you are trying uh, to um, impersonate a token, even if you don't have impersonation privileges, and this token is considered a God, to a God token, and is in this case, yes, because it has the membership of trusted installers, it will demote the token to an identification token with a very beautiful token, but is useless. I can do anything with it. So, game over? Not exactly, because if you do this third, uh, dirty trick, you set the logon ID to anonymous and not to system, and uh, with the create token API, you can set the uh, authentication ID of the token. You set it to anonymous ID. Magically, it works. Not all API call works, but some works, so, and it's sufficient for us to make privilege escalation. Why this? Because probably the checks which uh, when the windows made are too late. If windows see that the token is anonymous, probably thinks, oh, it's an anonymous token, it's harmless, let's go on. No, because this token has full, has uh, powerful memberships. And so, it's possible to do it. I noticed this to Microsoft, and they say, oh yeah, that, you, are, you are right, that's true, but we are not going to fix it in the security release. So, enjoy, okay? <laughs> This is the API call. Five minutes. I have to... I can go on or... Uh, very shortly, the load driver privilege. Load driver privilege is uh, also a special privilege which is granted to load drivers. And uh, normally, printer operators on the domain controller have this powerful privilege. What can we do with this privilege? Load a driver, assign driver, obviously, but to have some bugs, and then exploit this bug in order to gain a system shell, for example. Um, you have to trick the, the driver, the Windows kernel, to load the driver from a different location, not from the um, system hive, because as a printer operator, even if I have the load driver privilege, I cannot write in the system hive. So I will create the configuration of this, law of this device under my, my uh, Akaki current user um, hive, and then told, tell to the load driver API that he has to load it from my hive, and this works and I am able to load the driver. For example, here I loaded successfully this driver. This is a vulnerable driver of the Stopzilla. Stopzilla is an anti-malware utility which had, which had a serious bug, and using this bug and the modified version of the, of the exploit, I was able to uh, load uh, the driver, grant me the create token privilege, okay, and then add myself to the administrator group, just for example. 
The last two one, impersonation and assigned primary privileges. These are very, very uh, powerful because they are more easier to obtain because if you compromise a service account, you have these privileges, impersonate and assigned primary. What can you do with these privileges? A lot of things. You have to obtain a token, a powerful token, and then uh, impersonate this token. These are the dangers of impersonate and assigned primary privileges. How can we obtain this token? Uh, for example, forcing a privilege process to write into a name pipe under my control. Impersonate name pipe, and then I have the token, impersonate it, and I am system, for example. Or um, via a security context in NTLM authentication, we will see it later. Or via DCOM RPC callbacks, co-impersonate client, RPC impersonate client, okay? The killer exploit for these uh, privileges is the rotten potato exploit. Uh, you know it? Everybody knows it? Never heard about it? Okay, in short, uh, it's a little bit complicated. If you in, uh, initialize a DCOM object running an, as an out-of-process uh, server, la like Bits, for example, if you initialize this uh, object um, via a, stick, a fake storage object, and you can tell him that the all the um, oxid resolving has to be done under an endpoint under your control. So when the object has been initialized, it will contact the oxid, oxid resolver, which not is which, not no more running on port 135, but on a listener under my control. Intercept the local NTLM authentication. This is why it's called NTLM reflection. Alter it. Get the token. Impersonate the token. And if the out-of-process com server is running a system, you are system. There are some variants because the original exploit worked only with, with Metasploit or Incognito. Me too, I wrote two variants, two standalone variants, but we had a problem because uh, it was fixed. The port 666 was fixed, uh, uh, the object bits was fixed, and so it had, if, uh, and it happened, if you disabled the service or you firewalled some port, this exploit wouldn't work. So with my friend, uh, we tried to weaponize this, prod this uh, exploit and we produced what we call uh, Juicy Potato. Juicy Potato is, uh, al allows you to uh, configure everything. So you can choose the CLS ID of the out-of-process com server you want to use, the port listener, the RPC port, for example, if you have a, a Windows machine under your control, you can reflect the, the authentication on your uh, RPC server, and in the event viewer, you won't see nothing about authentication, very, very stealth, and so on. Other interesting, we, we produce the list of very, very interesting CLS IDs for each uh, operating system. Some of them are very interesting because they impersonate the user logged on on the first session. If domain admin is logged on, I can impersonate domain admin. Okay, these are the settings an ideal service should have for exploiting it. Okay, and this is our tool. You can download it here. And there is also a variant of uh, Metasploit. It has been ported also as a Metasploit uh, module. This is our, these are some examples of CLS IDs. Okay. I have a video, but I, sh I'm, I will skip it. You believe, you trust in what I'm saying, a video about exploiting this, okay? So, how can we stop this? I asked Microsoft more than one year ago, and Microsoft response said, in the current implementation model, we are not able to stop this. This is very, very bad, okay? So, it, it, it continues work. Can we do something? Not so much. Obviously, protect sensitive accounts, that is the best, and disable unnecessary services. But for the, de the um, defense side, there is good news, but because finally, Microsoft decided, uh, was able to fix it in version 1809 of Windows 10 and in version uh, 2019 of Windows Server. So, but if you have Windows 2016 Server or Windows version, minor than 1809, this exploit works. So if you have this privilege, you are automatically system, and that's very, very bad. Final thoughts? 
obviously never underestimate these privileges. This is what I told you. Uh, this uh, patch works only on newer versions, older versions, and there are plenty of Windows 2016 servers. It continues to work. Maybe there are other privileges not so well known we can abuse from. And as a side note, it has nothing to do with privileges. Uh, I no don't know how many of you knew that, that for more than one year, that w there was a service which was misconfigured, starting from uh, certain Windows versions, which grant full control to a service account. So, as you can see, if you compromise a service account using the orchestrator service, it was possible to gain system access, and this lasted for more than one year. We notified it with my team to Microsoft, and finally, in the September Patch Tuesday update, they fixed it, okay? Okay, that's all. I hope you enjoyed my, enjoyed my talk, <laughs> and sorry for uh, not having... <laughs> but time was still on, okay? Any questions? Everything is clear? Thank you again.